Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. Today we're doing a new segment called the Quick Flip. In comic book investing terminology, the quick flip normally means you have something for a very short period of time that you sell for a profit and had no intention of holding it for the long term. At my channel, I'm going to incorporate the phrase quick flip and make it mean real down and dirty, real fast information about this channel and other comic book news and always under seven minutes. And we'll cover a lot of different topics in a short period of time. Okay, now that you understand, let's go ahead and get right into it. Here's another reminder. I don't just talk about comics. I actually sell them too on eBay. And this is my homepage there. I'll put the link in the description. Right now I have a holiday sale going on with comics from 10 to 40% off. My feedback score is 100% out there. So I really know what I'm doing. So go ahead and shop with me at my eBay. I got key issues by the way, and it's not just some crap. We got some recent costume reveals on some live action adaptations, such as what Brenton DeWaits will look like as Nightwing on the Teen Titans TV show. They're just gonna call it Titans, and it's gonna be on a streaming service by Warner Brothers, which they have not announced yet. As you can see, he has the R on his uniform for Robin, so maybe they're gonna start him out as Robin and then upgrade him to Nightwing eventually over the course of the show. I don't have enough information to make a real determination on this, but this image alone looks like a B plus. I really like what they did here. Not to be outdone, Fox has released the first images of what the Dark Phoenix will look like played by Sophie Turner. I'm kind of mixed on this one because I need more stuff to really get a good grasp of this. I'm very, very suspicious of Fox on what they do with these characters without help from Marvel. In the comics, Jean Grey turned into the Phoenix for the first time in issue 101. And for a three-year story arc, we got some real hints that things were going to get darker. And that happened in issue 135 when this dropped. Issue 136 gave us one of the most swipe covers in comics history. And then she's supposed to die in issue 137, but of course no one ever dies because they're too valuable to stay dead. <laughs> that brings us to the big 800 pound gorilla in the room that Fox may be getting bought out by Disney for everything except for the television and the sports division. I talked about this in detail in the last quick flip, so go watch that if you don't know what's going on. But from what we're hearing, the deal is going to be intimate and could happen as early as next week. This news has stirred up a lot of emotion among the fans. There's some people that are angry because they believe that if this goes down, then the R-rated movies we're getting from Fox are not going to happen anymore, with the thinking being that the Disney overlords will want to make everything PG-13. Here's the voice of fanboys right now. Man, Deadpool and, and, and Logan were rated R, man, and they were awesome. If Disney makes them, they're going to try to make them PG-13 and make them all wussy. I don't believe that's true for one minute because think about this. Disney bought Miramax Films in 1993, and they're the same studio that made Pulp Fiction in 1994. This movie's got intense sadistic violence, a homosexual rape scene, drug overdoses, and all types of cussing and mayhem. And it was made on Miramax, which is owned by Disney. So technically, Pulp Fiction is a Disney movie, and that's how they handled it. The same thing with Warner Brothers, who owns the DC Universe, which owns the Watchmen Universe. Watchmen was made on Legendary Pictures, which is distributed by Warner Brothers. It too is a hard R with all types of violence in it. So I believe that if Disney buys out Fox, as we're believing it's going to happen, and they get Deadpool, and they get Cable, and the X-Force, and the current continuity of what they're doing with Logan and X-23, I believe they're going to make them their own division in Miramax or something like that, Keep them hard R because they're making money. They're working. Disney is not going to F up anything that's working. So if Deadpool and Cable show up in an X-Men movie, which I think they will, they'll tone them down just a little bit for the PG-13 crowd. But in their own solo films, it's going to be balls to the wall red R, which we're currently getting right now. So if you're a fan of the hard R comic book adaptations, don't worry, you're still going to get them. There are other people who are also angry and or suspicious because they believe that Disney will become a monopoly I understand why you might feel that way, but let's look at that from two angles. The government has the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, and the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. These organizations within the government have a lot of power, and if they believe that one company is going to become too powerful, then they can pass rulings that will basically break it up and block a potential merger from happening. For example, General Motors would not be allowed to buy Ford and Chrysler. That would make them virtually the only American car company. It would never happen. In Disney's case, they're far from being a monopoly. They're the biggest name out there, but you gotta think about this. There's Comcast, which owns Universal Studios. They own NBC. They own DreamWorks. There's Sony, 
which owns the Spider-Man property, the Karate Kid, Men in Black. They also own the movie rights to the Valiant universe. They're going to bring those characters to move. There's Warner Brothers, of course, that owns the complete DC catalog of superheroes. They've been doing a subpar job so far, but that's another story. Then there's Viacom, which owns Paramount Studios, MTV, BET, Nickelodeon, and so many other things. You see where I'm going with this? Of course, there's Netflix, which is a powerhouse in streaming right now. They just bought the rights to Malar World, so they want to try to translate those characters into original content. And of course, there's Amazon that wants to become a power player in entertainment, like movies and streaming, etc. They're growing. So make no mistake about it, Disney is super powerful. They own Pixar, they own Star Wars, they own Marvel, they're about to own Fox, and they own your little girl's imagination. However, they're not Monopoly. This deal is going through, so get used to it. And if you're worried about your r rated films, don't worry about it. Disney has a long track record of keeping what's working. And if ain't broke, don't fix it. The r rated movies at Fox are working. The only thing that needs to be blown up is the Fantastic Four, and it's going to be PG-13 anyway. At the end of the day, Disney is going to be more powerful, but they're not a monopoly. And the r rated movies, they're going to keep them. I absolutely guarantee it. My third annual top 10 comics of the year list is going to drop pretty soon. Look out for that in the next one to two weeks. 2017 was nowhere near as strong as 2015 and 2016, but there were still some good selections this year. And indies will continue to dominate the list again. You know the drill. Subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and share it on social media so others can learn about comic power. Once again, thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. It only gets better from here. If you already haven't done so, be sure to subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up and share these videos on social media so others can learn about the channel. Thank you for your support.